two-thirds of the taxpayer fraud, waste, and abuse that have occurred in government have occurred in the federal government in the Pentagon. And the same people who wrap themselves in the, in, in the flag of patriotism to justify the fraud and corruption that is going on there come to this microphone and lecture us about how to balance budgets and how to be more humane in the expenditure of state funds. When they should be hanging their heads in shame about what they've done to cities and towns and to the federal government when given the opportunity. Representative Paleologus. He didn't pronounce your name right, right either. It was it's close. Right. Paleologus. 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 Do I pronounce it right, Nick? Say Nick. All right, Nick. There's more to know about me than my name. As a state representative for the last 13 years, I've been working on issues that affect all of us. I've lived in Woburn all my life. My high school and college years were the heyday of political activism. My friend Fred Zolo and I took our drama club experience seriously enough to start our own production company. We've done all right. But my first passion is public service. By the age of 20, I had run for school committee and won. And in 1976, I knocked on doors and pounded the pavement to collect enough votes to win the seat I hold today. I was the first time I saw a politician come to the door when Nick did it. And uh, I think it worked out very well. People knew him, people remembered him, and people voted for him. In a surprise move today, the House voted 78 to 75 in favor of allowing on-the-air coverage by television and radio stations. More on this broadcasting breakthrough from Eyewitness Newsman Walt Sanders. Representative Nicholas Paleologus spearheaded the movement to permit television cameras in the House. Televised sessions of the House really were the turning point of the rules reform movement. Um, when, we, when we succeeded in that fight, it was only by three votes, but the place has never been the same since. It was in 1979, or early part of 80, that uh, Nick came to our assistance. Nick played a, a very active and a key role in getting the Massachusetts Superfund bill passed. I, mean, I don't think of the environment issue as uh, a public policy issue so much as it is a personal issue. I mean, it's not policy with me. It's personal. Uh, I have a situation in, in my district where kids died, period. Uh, that prompted me to, to put some legislation uh, on the books that, that looked into the connection between hazardous waste and cancer or, uh, or leukemia. That then led to um, legislation the following year to establish a super fund. When Nick became the House Chair of the Education Committee, he really hit the ground running. And that same year, we were able to pass the Educational Reform Act, which was an enormous boom for education in this state and really had been long overdue uh, for teachers, for parents, and for students. In America, uh, all we talked about was this notion of uh, throwing the kids into a, onto a hard bench and saying, sit down, shut up, and learn. That was basically everyone's notion of education reform. Well, it doesn't work that way. So what we tried to do in 1985 was to shift the focus. You know, what I've said is uh, we, we don't want to concentrate necessarily on the state house. We're interested in the schoolhouse. You want to know why the deficit is high? Why there's no revenue sharing for our cities and towns? Why the state of Massachusetts has had to quadruple its scholarship aid to make up for federal cutbacks in the scholarship aid program? Why are we quadrupling that amount of money? Because the federal government is cutting it. Well, I can't change issues just because I'm running for lieutenant governor. I've devoted my entire life in the legislature to education, and education is going to be my top priority. It seems to me that the most important thing people should look at when they look at all of us, the kind of new generation that is stepping forth to 
offer themselves as leaders for the 90s is not just what we did last, but what we've done that will last. The office of lieutenant governor is going to be as important, as compelling, as influential as the person who occupies it. It's that simple. And I'm ready to occupy that office.